Now we set it to Cincinnati. Dave O'Brien and Jimmy Dykes with Purdue and Xavier. Rob, thank you very much. We welcome you to Centos Center in Cincinnati. Completely sold out for Purdue and Xavier. The Boilermakers leading at 5-2. to two. Jimmy Dykes and Dave O'Brien with you. This is one of the best home court advantages in all of college basketball. Xavier's off to a 5-0 start. Robbie Hummel back with Purdue. That's his first misfire and a foul on this end. Xavier at 5-0. They just defeated Vanderbilt in overtime on the road. Purdue coming in. Jimmy at 7-1. and one. A look at the starting lineups. Well, both teams can really, really guard you. They put a high priority in guarding you and valuing shot selection. Potential All-American, All-Big Ten player, Robbie Hummel. Look at that right side over there. Lions and two Holloway can play with any guard combo in college basketball. Any of them. That's how good they are. Sonny March, who's 6'9 sophomore for the Boilermakers, and Matt Painter just picked up his second foul. He steps out, so Travis Carroll, a 6'9 sophomore, comes on for him in the game's first substitution. Holloway, kind of a sloppy dish there. No chance for Freeze to make a play on it. Jackson with the look away. It's blocked away, but a foul. He wants the basket to count, and so does Matt Painter. If that ball got up on the backboard and then it was touched, he can't tell it from that angle, but Desmond Wells is a high flyer around the rim. Painter hot. He thinks it still should have counted. Mark Lyons, though, just picked up his second foul. Lyons, top scorer, part of that great backcourt for Xavier you're talking about. Already two fouls. Those guys really climb into you defensively with hot hands, and Lyons, hot hands, has him on the bench right now. This kid at the free throw stripe, Jackson, can cause you all kinds of problems, and Chris Mack knows it. The offense for Purdue starts with Jackson, and it ends with Robbie Hummel. Jackson, one of the really lightning quick point guards in the country, can also step back and knock down a long distance shot on occasion. He rolls that foul shot in. So how, Purdue 7 to 2. How about the weekend you and I have had? Last night at a sold out KFC Young Center in Louisville. Then we drive. I, I stop on the way at Wendy's. You keep on going. You have more <laughs> discipline than me. Get here at 2 in the morning, up at 7 o'clock for shoot arounds and game day again in the Centaur Center. What a weekend. It was a great game last night. We saw overtime. Louisville won a thriller in the final seconds of overtime. By the way, you hadn't eaten since breakfast. It, well, I didn't have to throw that out there. Davis. He's going to travel with yeah. it and give it back. You've got five turnovers they, you've, got to, you've got to run your stuff against these two ball clubs. You try to make a first side of the floor one-on-one -on -one penetration or a first side of the floor jump shot, it is not going to work. Discipline, run your stuff, hard cut, screen, a must. Bobby Hummel setting a screen up top. He's coming off of two torn ACLs in the same knee, but he's averaging 19 points a game in the early going for the Boilermakers. He is wearing that bulky knee brace on the right knee. He, he's back in every area except the traffic plays. That has really affected his rebound numbers. They are down. Boy, great drive there by Kelsey Barlow, 6'5", junior, very talented, and the son of the former Notre Dame star Ken Barlow. So Purdue with a 9-2 lead. They look pretty crisp running the offense. Here's Holloway off target, and it's slapped out of play. And a little disagreement there, but the officials finally get the call right. 15-24 to go as it'll stay down here. Now the Boilermakers shooting it well early on in enemy territory. A very tough building here at Cintas Center. College Cup Championship Game, tomorrow at 1 on ESPNU. From Cincinnati, number 11, Xavier battling Purdue as we welcome you to Jimmy B Week for Cancer Research on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the B Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Jimmy Dykes, Dave O'Brien, great day for college basketball. Tremendous weekend for college basketball. And Cintas Center is one of the really, truly outstanding home court advantages. And not easy for Purdue. This is their first true road game this year. Purdue comes in with some older guys. You expect them to be able to handle this situation. But
but it, uh, they're going to have to play now because this is a Xavier team, I think, built to go deep in March. Their first true road game, he always is a head coach, little suspect how they're going to handle the environment. Robbie Hummel, this is a guy you're going to have to chase and get after for 40 minutes if you're Xavier. Xavier is so good in this building, a terrific home court advantage they have. Do not leave Robbie Hummel. You are his backpack if you are assigned to him in this ball game. You stay in contact with Robbie Hummel and don't let him get clean looks. He, by the way, is as good of a screener as I've seen all season long. Will screen three or four times in a possession before he gets a touch. He knows how to play the game. Missed all of last season. Lions is on the bench. A key development early for the Musketeers, averaging 18 points a game. Lions and two Holloway combined for 36 in the second half and the overtime. Their road win over Vanderbilt on Monday. Now Keem in on the bench. Swing here for Wells, dropping it off for Walker. Davis up high will let it fly, and it's a round and out. E. Davis, great energy they get out of him, the freshman coming off the bench, but a miss right away. Maybe the most explosive rebound of Robbie Hummel's senior year was right there. I mean, he went up and got after it like he was before those knees went out on him. Robbie was forced to watch from the bench at the United Center in tears last March as VCU upset Purdue. He could do nothing about it. He was devastated. Down the lane. That's going to be a, oh, count that basket and a blocking foul as Tyrone Johnson went in strong and has a chance for a three-point play. Well, that's what Tyrone Johnson can do. He's a driver. He thinks he's a shooter, but he's really a driver. Kind of an old-school YMCA-type game. Not real explosive, just knows how to read angles, and the defender just slides in at the last second too late. D. Davis, the freshman, tries to get there, but that's an easy call. You, know, you mentioned Robbie Hummel with tears in his eyes last year. The guy respects the game, man. He loves his teammates. He loves that Purdue jersey that he puts on. He values his entire career. You need more guys like that in college basketball. Johnson, nice three-point effort. Hummel will get a breather here. So 12 to 2, the Boilermakers with a 10-point lead. Taylor Hanning will try to hand off for Martin and he turns it over with the traveling violation. I think Purdue's heat has bothered Xavier so far in this game. That is their sixth turnover, and we haven't even played six minutes yet. Freeze is going to come back on the floor now, the seven-footer for head coach Chris Mack. And five and a half minutes into the game, Xavier has scored only two points. They've really taken the crowd out of it, Purdue has. Tonight, the HTC Big East SEC Challenge continues with a doubleheader at ESPNU. First at 7 Eastern, LSU will battle Rutgers. And then at 9, Bob Huggins, who's to coach right here in the city of Cincinnati. Now in West Virginia, of course, visiting number 24, Mississippi State. LSU, their last game against Houston. Storm Warren hit two free throws with 1.2 seconds left to win that game by one. And I talked to two Holloway about three weeks before the season began, and he brought up to me the importance of their non-conference strength of schedule this year. He said, we have to win games against Vanderbilt and Purdue, and Cincinnati, Gonzaga, Memphis. That will be the difference for a team outside the Power Six Conference like us becoming a two or three seed or going in as an eight or nine seed. They know what's at stake, the team in white, in this ball game. Tyrone Johnson, and that's a turnover. He palmed it. They've kicked it over twice now. Xavier's offense is virtually non-existent six minutes into the game. And this is the point where two Holloway should assert himself. Atlantic 10 player of the year, national player of the year conversation guy. He needs to get going. Taylor trying to find some help. Knocked away by Johnson, picked up by Jackson. Johnson will drive it. He can't score it. And an easy layup there. Holloway will give it off for Taylor. And that's going to be another turnover. They have more turnovers than they have shot attempts. Eight turnovers, Jimmy, and only five attempted field goals. Watch this defense right here at the top of your screen. Zero in black. Bam! Just blows it up. Again, well prepared, well scouted for what both teams are trying to do offensively, but especially Purdue. Jackson, that's going to be a goaltending call. Taylor got up there right around the iron, but an obvious goaltend, so it's 14-2. to 
Well, the Boilermakers with a tremendous start for them. And again, they have sucked the life out of the building at Centos Center. I go back to our one-on-one -on -one graphic, the number one thing for Purdue. This is their first true road game. Check. They can handle that. What a start. Travis Taylor, freeze on a high post, bouncing in from Martin, close into the baseline, follows his own miss, and he'll draw the foul. No basket, but Martin, the 6'6 freshman, will go to the line. He was selected to the preseason A-10 All-Rookie team, and they like him a lot. He's not a good foul shooter, though. OB, he came off of a, of a flex screen action on the baseline, but he went off it on the low side, and the screen was set too low, so as a result, Martin caught it actually underneath the basket. That flex screen action has to take place about one big step up the floor. Well, Bird hits the bench, and Hummel is back on for Matt Painter. Martin made the first. He's just 3 out of 15 at the line for the season. They look very smooth on both yeah. of those. They need all the offense they can get. Trailing by 10. Dave, I know it's early, but so far, this kid with a basketball has gotten into the lane any time he wants. Similar to what Peyton Siva was able to do at the end of the game last night to Vanderbilt. Look at how tough it is to win here and how good the Musketeers are at Cintas Center. Johnson with a teardrop, a lot of iron, and it'll rattle in for him. Again, guarding the ball, a problem to start this game for the home team. So Jackson's not the only one getting in the lane against the Musketeers. That's something that they're having trouble tightening up. Under 13 here. The bounce in for free, stripped away, stolen by Johnson. Tyrone Johnson being very active on both ends of the floor. Hummel drives it. Mid-range, short. And that one tipped out. It'll go the other way. It'll be Musketeer's ball, trailing 16-4. to four. Robbie Hummel talked to him today in the shoot-around about 9 o'clock this morning. Asked him what he wanted to do after the life of basketball, and he had a terrific answer. Something that allows me to golf. A job that allows me to <laughs> golf. I said, well, a professional yeah. golfer would be one. He said he actually took a golfing class this fall, and he's learned to keep his right elbow tucked in. It's improved his game. He shoots about the high 80s. He and I would go at it one-on-one. -on -one. That would be a match if he's in the high 80s. I'd like he's to right see there it. with me. I'd love to see it. Those Purdue kids are pretty bright. Something to do with golf. Walker <laughs> straight on for two. And a rare field goal make by the Musketeers. Maybe that will get them started. Walker's the blender. The with one year of eligibility, they bring him in. He's a blender guy, can defend 14 rebounds against Vanderbilt on Monday in the win. Jackson, oh, out of control there, but that's a blocking foul. Call the block, so it'll go against Xavier to the chagrin of the big crowd here. Personal against Justin Martin. You be the judge. Well, I thought all the other ones were the proper calls, but I think 20 had his feet set. There's a wide base, but I think his feet were set. I would agree. Jackson, 74% at the stripe. He has a unique free throw routine. He will drop that left foot back as he's dribbling and then step into it as he goes up for his shot. Watch his footwork as a free throw shooter. It's something you don't see too often. Look at that left sneaker. Now watch it. Bam, set, up. 18 to 6. Musketeers bring in Brad Redford. He's number 12 in white. He has spectacular shooting range. Passes tip stolen away. Another turnover for Xavier. They are piling up. Hummel catches, releases, can't bury it. He went down. And a foul. It'll take it to the other end of the floor. Musketeers will have the ball here. So we have a timeout on the court. 11.48 to go in the first half. 18 to 6, Purdue. ESPNU's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Kaspersky Lab Internet Security Solutions. Lovely, lovely day here on the campus of Xavier University in Cincinnati. One of the great restaurant towns in the United States. And uh, Jimmy Dykes will know that firsthand as we go inside the play. Well, Purdue defensively, they really scout and take away things you like to do. The handoff, bam, just blow it up. 
That's a terrific job of blowing it up by Tyrone Johnson, which leads to points. Just blow up the handoff. Now on the other end, watch uh, Purdue with their handoff action. Good wide base by Robbie Holmes becomes a little bit of a brush screener and it gets a guy a shot. So just a very simple form in this ball game early. One team blowing up a handoff play, the other team not. And Matt Painter's ball club, you look at their numbers defensively, OB, they allow 39% from the field, 33% from the three. They only allow 61 points. Nine o'clock this morning, Matt Painter's complaining to me in my ear about how bad they are defensively. <laughs> but that's his mentality, you know right. what I'm saying? Well, you see it when you watch one of the Purdue practices. Bodies hitting the floor all the time, and they take a great deal of pride in charges taken. And one of their key guys on that is Ryan Smith, their 6'3 senior. But, I mean, up and down the roster, that's the kind of player that Matt Painter recruits. Three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. NCAA Tournament again last year, 26 victories. And off to a 7-1 and one start, and a great start here today against an outstanding opponent. Wells trying to drive. Barlow holds him up and commits the foul before the shot. That'll be the second one on Kelsey Barlow. So 11.35 left in the opening half. Tyrone Johnson has really given the Boilermakers a nice nudge here. The first half is back on. Xavier still averaging more than one turnover per minute in this game. That will not work. Redford trying to get free. They say his range is basically out to the point of the X right there at midcourt. That's where he shoots from. Gives it up for Wells. Shot clock at 16 for Xavier. Walker trying to feed the big man inside. Freeze wants the ball. They can't get it to him. Shot clock at 7. Here's Holloway. He's been very quiet. He's hipped and fouled. Carroll trying to defend him, but he fouled him on the hip. In late clock, Xavier will, will bring their big guy on the move, a sprint-up ball screen action, forcing the defender covering him to have to be a hedge guy on the move, and it's not easy. There's a long, long stop there by Purdue with that shot clock winding down. Now they have to do it again. Well, it's back to Walker. It might be one of the few teams in the country that celebrates because they get to play defense back-to-back -back possessions. <laughs> Holloway, the All-American candidate, again, gives it up. Walker with a spin shot, too strong, and Hummel's there for the rebound in the lane. And for the first time in years, Purdue is not picked to compete for the Big Ten title with the Ohio States and the Michigan States, the Wisconsins. They're a middle-of-the-pack choice now that Juwan Johnson and Etuan Moore are gone. Well, if they are middle-of-the-pack, uh, that Big Ten will prove to be the deepest conference we have in college basketball this year. There is a gap between Ohio State and the rest of the field. Just can't figure out the rest of the field yet in that league. Purdue's certainly going to be a dark horse. The theft by Holloway. Got to help him. That one tipped out of play. It'll still be Xavier Ball here with 10.06 to go. They have scored only six points in half a half. Well, Lewis Jackson is just... Lewis Jackson's the kind of guy that when he goes up against the A-10 player of the year, the accolades that two Holloway has, he wakes up on game day and says, I can't wait to check this guy. And that's what Holloway's dealing with in this game. It's a big reason Lions and Holloway, who combined for 35, have been held scoreless, and they turn it over yet again. Boy, it has been an ugly first half so far for the Musketeers of Chris Mack. 11 turnovers. And Jacob Lawson, 6'8 freshman, coming on now for Matt Painter. So he continues to shuffle his bench. Getting productive minutes out of his bench. But OB Beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. You ask Matt Painter right now, he loves the way this game looks. Lewis Jackson. Quick penetrator. Nice. nice dish there in the basket for the kid who just entered, Lawson. That is a turn the corner point guard deluxe. 23 in black. Determined to take the ball where he wants to take it. And now Lawson commits the foul on the hand check. Let's get another look at him turning that corner. Well, he's 5'9", he's crafty, but he's tough. 
and he absorbed the first bounce and kept right on going. He does a good job attacking the hip. Bam, that's the attack the hip of the hedge defender, but it doesn't discourage from him taking the ball to the middle third of the floor and completing the pass. Toughness out of this kid. Jackson, a senior, all the way to the line. He has yet to score in this game, and he's still being held scoreless. Averaging 17 per contest. Lions, of course, has an excuse. He's been in foul trouble and on the bench. Averaging 18 a game. He has not scored either. They watch the screening action by Purdue. They will work you out, man. You have to stay disciplined because they're going to screen five, six times, get multiple touches of the ball on sides of the floor. Jackson off the screen. Drives the lane, scoops it up and in. Boy, that was beautifully run. How patient was he? I mean, that's the problem with most college guards right now. They get too impatient with the on-ball action. He was patient to perfection. Walker on the high post. Just six points for Xavier. Pretty remarkable. Holloway, foul. A lot of fouls. Lawson picks up his second in about a minute. One and one time for two Holloway. Terrific foul shooter. Tomorrow ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader at 3.30. Palmetto State bragging rights are on the line. South Carolina visiting Clemson. Then at 5.30, it's Kansas State and Virginia Tech in a good one. ESPNU, the home court of college hoops. OB, how about that game today down in Lexington? Kentucky 73, North Carolina 72. Michael Kidd Gilchrist went for a double-double, 17 and 11. One of the concerns I have with North Carolina showed up today. Their starting guards, Strickland and Kendall Marshall, only combined for 13 points. And you're going to win that Final Four. You're going to be that national champion. That offense from those starting guards have to be more than just passers and defenders. How about the way that game ended, too? Oh, the block shot by Anthony Davis over on John Henson. I mean, that was a lottery pick blocking the shot of a lottery pick. <laughs> yeah. It's an All-America play. Holloway just scored his first points, incidentally. But Xavier still isn't in the double figures. And they're getting drubbed here on their home floor early, although it is very early. And this is one of the most explosive backcourts in the country if they can keep Lions on the floor. Lawson with the adjustment midair draws the foul. He'll go to the line as he was hacked by Holloway, his first. It looked like Xavier trying to ice the on-ball action and force it down, but... Or the good spacing and the rollout and the read and an under, under control rollout by Jacob Lawson. For a young kid to spin out of that on-ball action OB and be under control, very impressive. Catches plenty of iron but drops in the foul shot. He is now three for ten on the young season. Anthony Johnson comes back on Jackson. Will get a breather. He's really been working hard on both ends of the floor. And you're looking at a ball game right now where you know Xavier's going to have to make a run at some point. One of those 12-2, 10-0 type runs. How do you do that? You get turnovers. We haven't seen any sign of them being able to turn Purdue over in this game. Lions is back. Well, that's one way to do it. Get the rocket going. Mark Lions back on with two fouls. That gets the crowd alive. The rocket. I like it. Johnson pulls up, but he's traveling with it. So maybe a little bit of a momentum shift all of a sudden. Xavier could certainly use that. Purdue up 23 to 10. And he's dropping the Sports Center U Studio Conference USA Championship. Southern Miss quarterback Austin Davis, four touchdown passes, two to Tracy Lampley. The Golden Eagles leading Houston 42 21. Houston needed a win in this game to get to a BCS Bowl. If they lose, it opens the door for a team like TCU. Meanwhile, Cincinnati clinches a share of the Big East title. The Bearcats need to pass West Virginia in the BCS standings if they are to represent the Big East in a BCS Bowl. ESPN News coverage of the Home Depot College Football Awards show starts Thursday at 5 from the Walt Disney World Boardwalk. Best players and coaches from the season under one roof, hoping to hear their name called as a winner of one of the nine most prestigious awards in college football. Exclusive VIP access all night long on ESPNU.
Dave, you can pick up some trends early in a ball game, and one of the trends for Purdue is continuing to get the ball to the middle third of the floor, starting on the left third of the floor. These are all strong right-handed drives to the middle third of the floor. Purdue continues to turn the corner. Handoff action, on-ball screening action, determined to turn the corner and make a play from the middle part of the floor. These are three separate plays that have all occurred the first 10 or 11 minutes of this ball game. And Xavier has to have an answer for that. If they allow the Purdue to continue to turn the corner with that type of efficiency, this lead's going to grow. I don't know if anybody does the handoff of those on-ball screens better than Georgetown on yeah, a consistent oh. basis, but I mean, Purdue's pretty close. That's what won the game for Georgetown and Alabama the other night. They drove the ball right at that corner, a little handoff to a jump shot for Hollis Thompson. Yes, terrific game. Turned over again. Johnson with the loose ball, floats it up and in for two. Nice little teardrop there by Anthony Johnson. And the lead grows back to 15. Is that 13 turnovers now, I believe, for Xavier 12? 12 turnovers. Crazy. That is just absolutely crazy. That's with seven minutes left in the half. That's with a, a backcourt that is as good as anybody in the country, in my opinion. Holloway, nice crossover move. Lyons outside, doesn't shoot it. He took a tougher shot and he banked it in. So Lyons starting to get going. He had the driving two and now the bank shot. Almost like they just have to hang close right now in the first half. They're going to get in the locker room and regroup. They came back against Vanderbilt in the second 20 minutes on the visiting floor. Hummel fires well short. He was well defended. Scuffles for the rebound. Blocked out of the sky by Walker. Here comes Holloway now. Good dribble to his right. Batted away. Stolen clean by Johnson. Ron Johnson's really played well here in the first half. He'll drive and score and go to the line. Boy, what a lift the sophomore from Indianapolis has given them. And a foul on Walker. What a play to start with on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, he just said, uh, thank you, I'll take it. The hot hands, and he's off and running. They brought it 94 feet. And boy, does a good job of covering it up like a running back, breaking through the initial line of scrimmage. Very aggressive as Purdue attacking the 10. He's given them some nice offensive minutes. He had 12 points in their opening win against Northern Illinois, 13 against Miami of Ohio. So he can help out Matt Pan Painter from the bench. His reps are too strong off the back iron, but it comes out high. So new shot clock here for Xavier. Again, just 12 points for the Musketeers. Walker off his fingertips. Lions drive, scoops on the baseline, no. Taylor battling for the rebound and now whistling a foul against Carroll. 27 to 12. Now, a lot of what we're seeing is certainly good defense by Purdue. But Xavier has played maybe their sloppiest half of the year. Yeah, absolutely. If not the last couple of years. I mean, they are loose with the basketball. It's To me, it's like the strength and the determination and the preparation and the DNA of Purdue has made this Xavier team play just a little bit faster than they want to. And that's on Holloway and Lions to settle this club down and play to their pace. Travis Taylor Jr. from Union, New Jersey. Knocks in the first one. Transfer from Monmouth University where he averaged 18 points, seven rebounds a game. Yeah, his motor is always on. It's one rebound about every three minutes, which is the best ratio that Xavier can put on the floor. Xavier now has as many points as they do turnovers. <laughs> 27 to 13, Boilermakers to walk it up. And under six minutes to go in the first half at Cintas Center, which has not been as raucous as Xavier would like. The spin, Johnson tried to force the pass and threw it away. They turned it over five times. Boy, Davis trying to get around Jackson. Good luck there. And stolen away. The quick hands by Jacob Lawson. Boilermakers with sticky defense. That's a blocking foul on Davis. He tried to sell it with the flop, but they were not buying it. Lewis Jackson's body language to me is telling everyone in this building, I can get by my guy and in the lane anytime I want. And so far, that's what he's done. So it'll be Jackson to the line. 5'9", senior from Decatur, Illinois. 
One and one for him. He's four for four at the line until that miss. And it's going to stay on this end. So it'll be Boilermaker ball, leading by 14 points. Matt Pater will bring Ryan Smith back on, a sharpshooter. Dave, the difference between a good team and a great team, great teams fix the problem right now. They don't wait till tomorrow's practice or the film session to fix what the problem is. So if Xavier is a legitimate great team, they will fix this turnover problem within this game and fight their way back. Hummel catches, fires. Not this time. Lions trying to press it. He's taken away clean by Jackson, who will left. Tried for the slam. I thought he was going to lay it up, and he should have. Went for the slam, and he blew it. The little guy trying to do a little too much at 5-9. Probably the only mistake this young man has made so far in this game. I mean, he's only 5-9. Wow. And just remember those two points right there. Doesn't look like it's a major play right now. But let's wait and see about an hour and 15 minutes from now. Matt Painter held up a hand in the direction of Lewis Jackson who looked back over his shoulder and he said, it's all right. No harm done in his opinion, but we'll see. Taylor will lift. Not there. And tipped out off Jackson's fingertips. So Xavier catches a break and they'll get it back. The painter has to be delighted with nine defensive steals and only four field goals allowed here in the first half. Well, he came in with three seniors that have been through the battles, man. And what they have done is defensively, they have established this ball game. And that's what leadership does for you. Jacob lost with his third foul already. He's already fouled out of two games this season, and he's picked up three in about five, six minutes. Bobby Hummel somewhat frustrated over the last seven or eight minutes himself. It'll be Taylor at the line. Taylor's been able to put on about 15 pounds since he came to Xavier. Continues to gain weight. One of many recent notable transfers to Lavender, Oklahoma, so since 0405. Andre Walker, Vanderbilt, we saw last night. And their heartbreaking loss at Louisville in overtime. Don't give up on Vanderbilt, though. They get Festus Azili back. That helps their. Pressure out on the perimeter with Tinsley and Jenkins and Taylor struggle with sometimes. Zip wow. the pass in for Cal. It's too easy for the basket. Beautiful execution. They're playing faster offensively. They have some quick hitters into their motion, and a quick hitter just silenced the crowd. Davis wildly fires that pass out of play and another turnover. Not sure what he was trying to do there. I'm sure Chris Mack shares the same thought. 16 times they've turned it over. They just run motion now. You watch the screening action involving Hummel. They will make the team in white work right now. I'll be surprised if they're quick trigger. Jackson off that handoff again. Carroll upset the screen. And Davis again fouling Lewis Jackson for the third time. He commits a foul. Boy, you talk about a clean offensive performance so far by Purdue. Just slicing up a tattered and torn defense. Tuesday, ESPN Yusuf A. Bank. Today, Shroff in studio coming up at halftime. We'll show you how number one Kentucky outlasted North Carolina. We'll check in on Arkansas and UConn, part of the Big East SEC Challenge, and Houston's BCS hopes dashed in the Conference USA Championship game.
And back here at Xavier as Matt Painter works that huddle. 29 to 15, his team out in front with 344 to play in the first half. Well, help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to www.jimmyv.org or just call 1 800 4 Jimmy V to donate. Well, I would say that the Chris Mack has everybody's attention in that huddle, or at least he should. You look at that Purdue defense, and that's the staple of Matt Painter and Gene Cady and that Purdue Boilermaker system. Boy, they have been a juggernaut on that end of the floor so far in this ballgame. They've blown up action. They were very well prepared. They knew exactly what Xavier's tendencies were. And this is the guy, much like Rick Pitino last night at Louisville, they're going to take away your strength and see if your counter can keep you in the ball game. Lewis Jackson, a senior at the line. 30 to 15, so they've doubled up the Musketeers. The 16 turnovers for Xavier, and mind you, this is with almost four minutes to go in the half, equals a season high. They have not had more than 20 in a game since the 08-09 season, and they have almost that many and a half. Man. They've been loose, but Purdue has been tight on that ball. Freeze. Doubled up. Yeah, that's a quick double, wasn't it? A monster, a, a quick monster, and then they rotate right back out of it. Double on him again, and ah. now a traveling violation. That's Painter, cool. he actually wanted one a few seconds before that, and he might have been right about that, too. Obi, that was a clinic defensively on how to monster the post, force it out of the post. They actually did it twice. Look at Matt Painter slap Jackson on the backside. a boy! That just fuels their fire. Bruce, he was a pretty good guard himself in his Purdue days as a player. The spin shot by Hummel, no. So he's got a little cold after initially hitting his first two shots. 3-10 to go as it stays on this end of the Boilermakers. They have dominated the first half despite the fact Hummel is two for nine. You know, Hummel is a high volume shooter this year, but that's okay. They need him to be. He's averaging about 14, 15 shots a game. And if he takes good ones, you can live with the two or three he might force every 40 minutes. Yeah, they're a different looking team. No question about yeah. that. They don't have that inside presence they had with the outstanding player, Juwan Johnson and Etwan Moore. That's 20 and 18 points a game. Exactly. You watch Purdue's movement off the ball. They go hard, man. They cut hard. Hummel fires it up and spins off. Now two for ten. And Robbie came out of there with a smile on his face like, what do I have to do to get a shot to go down? More importantly, what does Xavier have to do to get a shot to go down? There's a pretty good look. Redford hit, and he hits the shot from way downtown. How about that? Nailing the three-pointer. That might be the lift they need before halftime. And OB, he comes up pointing at the bench. Almost to tell Chris Mack, thanks for calling my number. You call my number right here, watch the point. Right there. I got you, coach. I answered the call. Pretty good ball screen set by Freeze. That's the one time Purdue's been a little late recovering. Can't make the four-point play. Hummel there with a rebound. 31-18. Boilermakers at 7-1. Xavier is 5-0. That's a traveling violation on Carroll. Xavier has had only one better start in the last 14 years. That was in 08 when they went 9-0. That team eventually went to the Sweet 16. I will say this about Chris Mack. In the first 16 minutes of this game, when things were just going crazy, he never changed expression. I watched him after when the, uh, when the turnovers started accumulating, it didn't bother him. He knows if he can get this thing to 10 points or less at halftime, they're right back in it. His backcourt scoring-wise has been virtually non-existent. That can't happen for 40 no, minutes, no. not with these guys, Lions exactly. and Holland. Exactly. Under two to play in the first half. A forgettable half so far for Xavier. Swing pass there, freeze for two. That was Holloway with a quick look. On time, on target with the delivery. And Freeze did a nice rim run and got his jersey exposed. Now we're back to having a little bit of pressure on Purdue for the first time in this game. And they're back to it in 11 for the first time in a while. This should be their motion. Move, move, move is what Matt P 
Painter's telling his guys. I'm a long distance shot. That didn't touch anything. Goodness gracious. Yeah, that was a. Uh, that's not at all what he wanted. That's that two or three times a game that Robbie Hummel has turned into a high volume shooter. Matt Painter had a timeout to burn. Use it or lose it, and he might think back on that possession wishing that he might have used it. Almost missed nine straight shots. A minute ten to go before the break. Xavier on the comeback trail. This building's a basket away from exploding. But another turnover. 17 and a half. Kenny Freeze can't make that pass, Dave. He's averaging four turnovers a game for a big guy. At times, I think they put him in a bad position and almost force him to be the passer on set plays. Again, Purdue still has that timeout to use. I'm with the handoff for Johnson. Here's Anthony Johnson. Too strong. Taylor up with a big rebound. Holloway trying to push it down the lane. He goes and he lays it in. Timeout. Purdue takes one. And Xavier is nine down. A seven zip run. When your half court offense isn't getting it done, you've got to do something else. That's a man's rebound, first of all. Two hand traffic rebound, and two Holloway knows our half court offense is not working. So the numbers were even, but in 52's eyes, that's advantage white. Tuesday, ESPN U.S. College basketball doubleheader featuring two top programs at 7 Eastern. Harrison Barnes and number five, North Carolina, will host Evansville. And at 9 o'clock, Long Beach State looks for another big upset as they square up against Thomas Robinson and number 14, Kansas. That's Tuesday night, starting at 7 Eastern on ESPN U. Dave, so important to remember it's December the 3rd, 4th, somewhere in there. I know I'm close. It's just a snapshot still. All we learned about North Carolina and Kentucky today is they're two elite teams in college basketball. And Kentucky's young guys could handle the big stage. We know North Carolina can. Well, finding a little something out about the Xavier Musketeers, the number 11 team in the country, showing some gumption and digging their way back into this game. They were on the verge of getting blown out of their own gym. Jackson. Now here's Johnson from the corner. Jackson got the rebound and up and in. 33-22. Jackson went down on the play as he got hammered. Chris Mack thought the ball was in the cylinder. His basket interference. And they're going to take a look. That's a judgment play that they will not take a look at. Was the ball up on the cylinder? You decide. Here it is, Dave. When it gets back up by Jackson, watch right. Yes, clearly that's a miss. And that's a miss that they can't correct. 33-22 as we go back to the Sports Center U studio with Anish and Adrian. All right, thank you very much, Dave. If you want a stat for that first half, here it is. Xavier, 18 turnovers, 16 shot attempts. <laughs> Say that again. You know what it is. It's about priorities. And when you think about this, Purdue went to Alabama and they had their hats handed to them. Since that game, they've been holding opponents to 53 points a game and 33% from the field. And it comes down to priorities. It's all about priorities. They're trying to take two Holloway out of it. The backcourt mark, mark lines between the two of them, they've averaged 35 points a game. And they simply read the scouting uh, book on Marquette on what they did to to Holloway last season. Xavier had only 22 points to go along with those 18 turnovers. North Carolina and Kentucky, number five against number one. The Heels in their history have knocked off a number one team 12 times. It's more than anybody else. Terrence Jones, NBA three, he had 14. Kentucky down by four and then off the turnover here. UNC so good at this. Dexter Strickland finishing. Heavyweights. You saw some tired pups out there. They were going toe-to-toe -to -toe for 40 minutes. You want to talk about pups? It's a big dog. 
He might be a pup. Anthony Davis at seven. <laughs> Deron Lamb, Kentucky returning firepower this year. They were, and, and they kept their poise. Both teams were making runs at them, but points in the paint were the difference for Kentucky, 36 to 14. Harrison Barnes, three of his 14. Darius Miller from 15 gets the leaner to go. Kentucky up by four, but the Heels, they still had a run in them. Reggie Bullock. It's a one-point game. You had everything. You had strategy, and right here was key. Look at this shot right here, the defense. John Henson blocked by who else? The freshman, Anthony Davis. I like what John Henson said. He said, hey, I've done that to other people. It's funny how he did that to me. Davis only had seven points, but coming up with the key block, Kentucky at home, a big win against the number five team in the nation, a team that was preseason number one. What does this win say about Kentucky? Well, they've got poise and toughness, and it showed under their true test at home. They were able to meet the challenge. Now they got to continue to work hard and stay humble and responsible, responsible being number one in the nation. More top 25 action. We go to Ann Arbor, Michigan, taking on Iowa State. There's the mayor, Fred Hoiberg. First half, tie game. Watch Roy Swite spin cycle. They're expecting a lot of big things from this big guy. He can score from the three-point line and in. That's show Akune with a big three. Michigan up by one. And then Tim Hardaway, only five points in his last game. He came up with a big game for the Wolverines. He's a star. Six foot five, electrifying. He'll make highlights and he'll be consistent for him. Michigan again from the outside. They go into the half up by nine. And then in the second half, Wolverines running away with it. Stu Douglas, nice wraparound pass. Jordan Morgan, the big finish. Michigan. Goes on, goes on to win by 10. Ohio State, big win over University of Tennessee, Pan American, 64 to 35. Sully Fold, good time to take a break. 8 0, the Buckeyes, number two team in the nation. When we come back, we'll check in on Houston. They needed a win in the conference. It was a championship game to go to a BCS Bowl. Oh, but it was not to be. Maybe a nightmare afternoon in what's been a dream season. Lewis Jackson, a nice feed for Purdue. Boilermakers up by 11. Championship Saturday in college football. To recap, Northern Illinois wins the MAC. Oregon wins the Pac-12. Southern Miss upsets Houston in the Conference USA Championship. Of course, the SEC Championship. That's about to get underway soon. Georgia taking on number one LSU. For more on that game, here's Kara Capuano in Atlanta. One of the not-so-secret keys to LSU's success the past few seasons, the grass-eating habits of head coach Les Miles. Yesterday at the coach's luncheon, one of the fans asked about that, being that the SEC championship is being played on the artificial turf of the Georgia Dome. Miles joked that his sports information director, Michael Bennett, has brought along a special jar of Tiger Stadium grass just in case. And he warned everybody, if he reaches for the jar in the grass, you know something big is going to happen. Let's send it back to you, Anish. All right, thank you, Carol. We'll look forward to that. Southern Miss Houston Conference USA Championship. Houston entered the day needing a win to go to a BCS Bowl. Austin Davis and Southern Miss, other ideas from the get-go. Second quarter tied at 14. Dominique Sullivan, 69 yards for a touchdown. Golden Eagles up 21-14. Third quarter, we haven't seen Houston punt often, so maybe... This explains why that, that happened. Punt is blocked. Furious Bradley. Furious anger. Golden Eagles up 28-14. And then Case Keenum. Ooh. Cold Case on this Saturday. He was not mistake-free like he usually is. Desmond Johnson, 17 yards for the touchdown. 35-21. And then Austin Davis to Tracy Lampley. 61 yards. That was Davis's fourth touchdown of the game. Yeah, the Gatorade bath in full effect for Larry Fedora. Southern Miss wins 49 to 28. Four TD passes for Austin Davis. Meanwhile, TCU leading UNLV at the half. With Houston losing, TCU now has a chance to go to a BCS bowl game. Who would have thought? UConn taking on Cincinnati. The Bearcats could clinch a share of the Big East crown with a win against the Huskies. First quarter watch, Johnny McEntee in the end zone. The defender, Walter Stewart, literally rips the ball away from him for a touchdown. That's mine. Oh, flag football. 
grown man football. And then Munchie Legault, backup quarterback for Cincy, starting with Zach Calaro's hurt. 13-yard TD pass to Anthony McClung. Fourth quarter, UConn trying to make a comeback. Johnny McEntee, Mark Hinckley. It's 35-20, and then McEntee to Ryan Griffin. UConn back in the game. 35-27, but this was big. Isaiah P, four yards for a first down. Cincinnati would run the clock down to five seconds before punting. So since he clinches a share of the Big East title, Pittsburgh knocks off Syracuse. The Panthers bowl eligible. West Virginia, in all likelihood, will get the Big East automatic qualifier to a BCS bowl. All they have to do is be ahead of Cincinnati in the final BCS standings, which they are going into the week. How about some UConn hoops? Connecticut taking on Arkansas. Jeremy Lamb, the runner off the glass, and then Lamb from the wing. You know what? They withstood the pressure of Arkansas. They want to press him up, new style, want to press the basketball, but they've been able to get open looks. Lamb, that time from deep. Ten points in the first half. UConn up by seven at the break. Purdue has forced 18 turnovers in the first half. They lead Xavier by 11 at the break. Feel the excitement? That's peak. It is Jimmy V Week. And, of course, you can help in the fight against cancer. To donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 100% of your donations will go toward cancer research. Gonzaga taking on Illinois. Mark Few likes to do this, schedule some early season road tests for his team. Gonzaga's been hot. Brandon Paul, ooh, got to watch that guy on the baseline. There's a dunk. Illinois up 10-6 early, and then Sam Maniscalco. Early in the season, he's been their most dominant player, effective, controlling everything for Illinois. Illinois up five. Why not make it a DJ Richardson the three? Gonzaga is close to within two. That's your score at the half, 38-36. Around campus, last night, Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim apologized for comments he made after allegations of child abuse and sex abuse surfaced against his now former assistant, Bernie Fine. Jerry Sandusky spoke to the New York Times in his first extended interview. He says Joe Paterno never spoke to him about any suspected misconduct with minors. And according to a source, Arizona State has ended its pursuit of Houston head coach Kevin Sumlin. Robbie Hummel, the fifth-year senior, only three of 11, but he's got seven points. Purdue has forced 18 turnovers, up 11 at the break. The second half is next. Purdue with an 11-point lead as we get ready for the second half here at Xavier 33-22. As we welcome you back to Jimmy Weaving for Cancer Research on ESPN, we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Dave O'Brien and Jimmy Dykes with you. Well, an interesting end of the first half. I thought they might look back at that last play on clock. They decided not to do that. They can look back on it on a judgment call on the floor, whether that ball was tipped in or not. Was it on the cylinder? It was on the cylinder. They, they cannot go to the monitor for this type of a review. And right there it was. It was pretty clear. And how about that? That was only Robbie Hummel's third made basket the first half. If I would have told you before the ball game, Robbie Hummel would be three for 12 at the halftime, what would you think? Not good news for be Purdue. In trouble. They'd be down 11. The Savior, 18 turnovers. Are you kidding me? Top of a backcourt that I think is one of the best in the country, but Purdue has moved the basketball in their half-court offense with great efficiency. Quickness has caused Xavier problems, especially this kid, Lewis Jackson. And now the turnovers of Xavier, though, the story of this ballgame. And everyone that's played for Xavier has a part in it, whether they're not getting himself open, not being strong with the ball, getting loose with the ball as a handler. The ball screen action is blown up. They really bothered Freeze when he got double teamed. It was a defensive clinic by Purdue. With that being said and done, Xavier's only down 11 on their home floor. 18 turnovers, that's pretty staggering. But Purdue's sticky defense has had much to do with that. As you see all those steals, nine Purdue steals. And the Boilermakers open up with the ball. And the big lead here in the second half. Holloway and Lions combined for 35 points a game. They only have eight. Boy, Hummel right out of the gate with a misfire makes him three for 13. Remember, he hit his first two shots, too.
Jackson with the kick, the wing jump shot, all met by Ryan Smith. Two legit shooters in Hummel and Smith. And then the point guard, Jackson, getting into the teeth of the defense. Desmond Wells, talented freshman off to Walker. Here's Holloway with a three. Tipped into the corner. Smith trying to chase it down. And he went flying out of bounds. Did Wells. It'll be Purdue basketball. It's 36 22, Jimmy. Partner, it's not a game that, that Purdue's going to give back to Xavier. Xavier's going to have to do something different. They're going to have to change how they're going. You want to make change, then make change happen. And so on the defensive end, can they delete that drive? Barlow's the open shooter. Rebound tipped out high. Jackson with the quick hands. Just quicker, isn't it? He's quicker than anyone else on the floor. He Jackson. Is. He has shown it since the first minute. And now whistle off the ball and a foul against Xavier with 18.42 to go. Look at that backward duo now. Four and four for Holloway and Lions. And that's all. Two guys averaging combined 35 points between them. And this, if this ball club is built to make a deep run in March, those two guys have to take control of this game. And it is not going to be easy for them to do with this defense of Purdue. Five moments ago on Andre Walker of Xavier Jackson. Trying to drive that baseline. Mark shoots there. Oh, he had the bunny and he missed it. Got to make layups, don't you? Jackson did everything but scored himself. Walker gave up the dribble. Lions trying to shred that defense. Banks it up and in. Wow, that was a tough shot. Archuch with his third foul. Lions showing some muscle. OB, I've seen this team on Monday night come back at Vanderbilt in the Rockin' Memorial Gym behind the, the will of Lions and two Holloway. Very difficult to kill the will of 10 and 52. In and out with a foul shot. Rebound up. That won't fall by Freeze. So both big men have had pretty easy shots right on the iron roll away. Jackson working on Lions. Jackson got him in foul trouble early, and he's committed another one. That's number three. Lions pleading his case with his bench, but Chris Mack just put a finger to his own forehead like, you've got to think out there. Lions is up against a guy that's quicker than him and just as tough. Those are two extremely tough guys going at one another, but 23 is quicker than 10. 23 has put 10 in foul trouble. Eight minutes of play is three fouls between the first and second half. Well, they really grind you in the half court in their motion. Turn you over and test your discipline. Hummel off the fake. Jumping into the lane for the teardrop and two. Robbie Hummel to rehab this summer with trainer Tim Grover at Attack Athletics in Chicago. She's done such great work with people like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant tipped up and in. Walker there. 38-26. You know, Kenny Freeze has missed a couple of two-footers, but he has to stay aggressive. I don't, I don't think they can check him inside, so he's got to shake those misses off. Be productive. Smith catches, fires, too long. New shot clock for the Boilermakers. Barlow around the back to get himself free. Oh, that's pretty. That shows you a little bit of the skill of Kelsey Barlow. Absolutely, because he is a big-time drive threat, and his ability to stop into a jump shot is hard to handle. Pretty play here by Holloway with the answer on the other end to Holloway. The senior from Hempstead, New York. But they can't trade baskets with Purdue. They're down too many and they've been down most of the game after a hot start by the Boilers. That painter calls a quick hitter. The quick hitter doesn't work. Then they go to their motion. And it didn't work, so here comes the motion. Barlow to drive, and another pretty shot by Kelsey Barlow. When you're 6'5", and you can take the ball to the teeth of the defense, even if it's pretty good, you can just elevate over the top of it, and he does it well. Oh, 
Well, he finds the open man. Walker spinning underneath. No. Freeze with a rebound to the other side for two. Stay after it. Right, now, I think that's a key guy right now. Between the two guards and Freeze, they got a chance to claw back into this game. Jackson blown by everybody, lays it up and in. <laughs> he is worth the price of admission. Wow. Matt Painter told me this summer when I was up at the Colorado Springs at the World University game tryouts, I wish I had my own point guard up here. I see why. Wells to drive it short. On the other side, he collects the loose ball. Freeze. With very good eyes. Holloway drives inside, trying to wiggle free, draws the foul. He'll be back to shoot two and coming back a rude awakening and during Jimmy V week it's a familiar tale how cancer affects everyone when we return to Xavier. The Women's College Cup Championship game. Milano is diagnosed with a rare type of breast cancer. Thanks to early detection and treatment her doctors have declared that cancer gone. And while she still faces future surgeries, Justin will be at his mom's side every step of the way. And to quote him, he said, I'm thankful for having such a strong woman in my life. Because of her illness, Justin's mom didn't see her son play in a Xavier uniform until the day after Thanksgiving against Georgia. That photo taken November 21. That's his niece, his mom, and his sister. So this one has a happy ending. It would appear many cancer stories do not, of course, Help us beat cancer. The V Foundation, 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events fund cancer research. Boy, please donate. That's a disease that knows no barriers and no boundaries. I believe over $4 million has been raised the last four years during the Jimmy V week. And 100% of the proceeds goes directly towards that cancer research. And it's nice to hear successful stories and People having a fighting chance like Coach K talked about last night during our game. 15.06 to go. Maybe a momentum switch here. On the foul by Kelsey Barlow. Within 12 by the Musketeers. Well, he's got Redford on the floor. And when he's on the floor, he's not out there for any other reason but to spot up and knock down a shot. So right now you have to be concerned about a play call for number 12 in white if you're Purdue. Now Carroll will step out now for Matt Painter. He's being checked by Ryan Smith. Redford is. A shooter should know how to guard a shooter. Well, they both have outstanding range. Holloway trying to curl it in through the pass away. And now numbers are three on one. Jackson dishes to Johnson. He draws the foul. He'll be shooting. Ron Johnson, who was very instrumental in the big first half lead for the Boilermakers, going to the line for two. 14 49 left here at Centos Center. Mark with a foul. Johnson with issues at the line, though. 40% foul shooter coming into today. For Purdue, the first true road test of the season. Looking to continue a push into the top 25. They're not there yet. They've also lost three in a row in the series against Xavier. Carroll yeah. returning on the lane, Jimmy. That top 25, though, be, I mean, it's a, uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me right now. Like, like California still ranked after they got smoked, man. They got smoked by Missouri. 39 points. You look down there at teams like Georgetown, Harvard, unbeaten, Cleveland State, not ranked. Doesn't make a lot of sense. There's the guy. Rounded out by Redford. 14.40 to go. They could have used that lift. He's already drained one long three and was actually fouled in the act of shooting in the first half. Look at Purdue, 121 and 15 when leading at halftime under Matt Painter. They know how to close. That's impressive. You know why that number is what it is? Because they defend their tails off. They take good shots and they don't turn it over. Carroll back out for Jackson. They'll loft it up there. That'll fall off. Carroll went for the rebound, tipped away. Redford wants to run. And now needs some help up top for two Holloway. 
selected to the all a 10 defensive team in the preseason all American list actually several of those they have a lot of teams when they go cold offensively they can't get stops with Purdue they can go cold for three or four minutes doesn't bother them. they are not offensive sensitive and I love it Jackson trying to get right by and he draws the foul they just can't contain him he's going right at two of the best guards in the country Holloway one of them he takes a spill he is in control of this game and he's also in control of his speed because he's got a gear now and, but he uses it wisely he's not always on hundred miles per hour 23 he about literally undressed to he Holloway did. He there. Did. yeah it was close so Jackson to the line where he is a 74 percent foul shooter Sometimes the guy is just controlling the basketball game off the bounce, and that's what Jackson's doing. His ability to get lower than anyone else that Xavier can put on him is something that Xavier does not have an answer for. And they can't separate him from the ball as he misses the second one. He's been so reliable with it. 44-32. Still a window, obviously, for Xavier, but they got to find some go-to scorer. Holloway, usually that man, but he can't bang that one in. Rebound comes to the Speedy Jackson. Out in front. Here's Johnson. Yes, a three-pointer. Boy, that one really hurts the Xavier cause. The speed of Jackson again. That was a 50-50 ball that he pushed out in front of himself and just ran it down. Speed kills. And right now, that speed is killing Xavier. Freeze fouled from behind. And it'll go against D.J. Bird. The second. This is real time now, Jackson. Just watch right here. We're going to come a foot race right now. Boom. Who wants it? Zip. Bam. Right out of a Batman episode. <laughs> Coming up on 13 minutes to go here at Centos Center. Freeze. Nice touch off the inbounds. That'll fall in for him. I just go to him for a three or four minute stretch. I mean, Holloway and Lions are your guys, but right now, Freeze might be the guy that can get you back in this game. Darrell Johnson. High off the window, won't drop. Big fight for the rebound. It's on the backside. So it'll stay on this end. It'll be Purdue ball. That's out of bounds off the backside of the backboard. So 47 34. Bobby Hummel's going to enter the fray again. He's had a tough, tough shooting day. Four out of 14. But we've seen Robbie Hummel in the Big Ten just carve up defenses by hitting six, seven, eight in a row. He can be one of the streakier shooters in the country. He is such a terrific screener. And he has a body to be a great screener because he's a shot threat. He cuts hard now. You talk about going with a purpose. He understands it. Jackson trying to split right through everyone. But that time gave it up. Now they've got three on two. Lyons will lay it up and in. So Mark Lyons with the basket came in averaging 18 a game. He's been in foul trouble, just eight points today, but they are down 11 again. Tyrone Johnson backs it out. Shot clock inside 10 seconds now. Hummel off the fake, a little closer, drops yeah. it in, a two-pointer. Can't throw it inside, but you can throw it to Robbie Hummel and let him make the play. Just lifted the defense and took up the slack and stuck it on you. Freeze doubled up, they'll chase the seven-footer. Got it out to Walker, has it plucked free from behind. Jackson will wait up now. Hummel, long distance three, yes! 52-36. to 36. 
And Purdue's expanding the lead. What do you say about Robbie Hummel? You've seen him over the years. Hit back to back to back baskets. <laughs> back to back to back to back to yes. back. Yeah, that's what he can do to you. So glad to see Robbie Hummel back in that Purdue uniform with healthy knees. Yeah, he's one of the nicest kids in the college game. Freeze went for the dunk and Hummel fouled him. So Kenny Freeze will be shooting. Not usually a very good thing. First foul on Hummel, but he is starting to cook. Robbie Hummel, a guy that has NBA knowledge as far as how to play the game. He's 6'8", and he has an NBA stroke. That, to me, equates to a future NBA guy. That's a peak of the very active Fountain Square in downtown Cincinnati. Cincinnati sports teams win championships. You do some ice skating down there, but that's where they'll have the parade. 52-36, Purdue in command. 11.05 to go, and Robbie Hummel cooking now. Well, when you're a senior, playing with a fifth-year senior, you've logged a lot of minutes. Jackson knew the entire time bringing up where he was going to go with the ball. You saw him looking forward, but his vision was actually going backwards, just feeling where is Robbie Hummel. Look what this kid has done. Just his numbers have increased every year, with the exception of this year. His rebounding numbers have dropped, and that's that has to be attributed directly to his knees. He's still not real comfortable in traffic and jumping up around traffic guys. But I think as the season goes on, his offensive production will stay high. His rebound numbers will come back to where they were. He has 14 points, six out of 16 shooting, five rebounds today. Foul right before the break puts Kenny Freeze to the line. Senior out of Ohio. I mean, there was a there was a time OB where Robbie Hummel was in that National Player of the Year conversation before he had his knee surgeries. Yep. He's not in that conversation now. Certainly he'll be in the All Big Ten or on that All Big Ten first team. But you know, McDermott, Mike Moser at UNLV, Anthony Davis, Harrison Barnes, Sullinger would be. The guy to keep an eye on right now, but Marcus Denman, Zeller, Perry Jones the third, just so many guys that you just, we just have to watch. Instead of labeling someone the National Player of the Year in December, just let it play out. As you said, it's December 3rd. Oh, some of the basketball has been immensely entertaining. You and I saw a great ball game last night. Before the shot made, no basket, there was a foul on the floor. Last night we watched overtime as Louisville won a thriller against Vanderbilt. The final seconds of overtime. Andre Walker with his third foul. So Walker's going to step out. Ryan Smith back on for the Boilers. And Smith will put it in play now for Purdue. They're trying to go to 8-1. Johnson back to Smith doesn't need much and there he goes for three set play off the side out of bounds a little misdirection bring it one way and have the shooter trail from behind so this is the biggest lead of the day for the Boilermakers a foul as Redford went spilling to the deck personal on Smith is third watch this misdirection dribble now, misdirection. Bring it to the right, come back to the left, and this is a young man that is locked and loaded. 6'3", gets good vision of the rim. He's knocking down shots and humble, and Jackson's penetrating. Hard to guard. Smith took 143 shots last year. All but 16 of them were from three. Mm, specialist. 55-36. This unexpected, what we're seeing here today. Absolutely. The number 11 team in the country is getting kicked in the teeth here by the Purdue Boilermakers, who certainly look like a top 25 team to us, unranked at the moment. Lions lets fly. In and out, nothing falling for him. He got an excellent look at it. So Jackson in no hurry to walk it up here. Purdue, to me, is top 25 in every area, with the exception of scoring around the rim. That doesn't mean that they can't be a top 25 team, but if they had that piece, then they are right there in the mix of that Ohio State thing going on right now in the Big Ten. And because they don't have that, I'm not sure, sure, you know, the Sullinger factor doesn't hit these guys when they play them. Now, one and one time, Lions will be marching to the line. 
talked about that outstanding win they had. That was a comeback win on Monday against Van to force overtime. And Lyons was the guy who hit the spinning layup with six seconds left in regulation to force OT. There's three to collect and slam it. I don't know. I still like him right now in this game. I don't think they can get him enough touches with 9.42 to go. What you like about Lewis Jackson, you don't have to tell him to walk the ball up right now. He knows how to win games on the road. Here's Barlow's had a couple of beautiful baskets here in the second half. And he finds Carroll, who can't finish it off. Well, that was Taylor made, and now Jackson commits a rather silly foul. And the backcourt stops the clock at 9.16 to go. Carroll's got to be tough enough to make that shot. I mean, the offense sets you up with an on-ball screen action. The pass is on time and on target, and you just you have to finish. One and one for Lions. Where he hits 81%. Ryan Smith back on now for Matt Painter. Xavier is hoping to continue their recent success against the Big Ten. They have won five in a row against that conference, against five different teams since 2007, including NCAA tournament wins against Minnesota, Purdue, and Wisconsin. A regular season win against Iowa and another against then number eight Indiana. Tonight, the HTC Big East SEC Challenge continues. The doubleheader on ESPNU. At 7 Eastern, it's LSU and Rutgers. Then at 9 o'clock, Bob Huggins of West Virginia battling number 24, Mississippi State, in the Big East SEC Challenge on ESPNU tonight. You know, you mentioned that run of Xavier against the Big Ten. There's nothing about Xavier's program that doesn't spell power conference with the exception of they're not in one how they recruit, the level of recruits they bring in, their success in the NCAA tournament, their facilities, their commitment to basketball, passionate fan base, everything about it is legit. And they play in a great building, which is really hard to win in for an opponent, but Purdue has played so well today, and Xavier has played very sloppily today. And thus you see the score, 55-39, big shock. Here's a turnover with Lions trying to penetrate. Up he goes for two more. Well, Lewis Jackson is out of the ball game right now. Trying to get him some, uh, some rest because he's logged a lot of heavy minutes. And when he goes out, Purdue looks different. And Lewis Jackson is checking in. Matt Painter knows a lot better than I do. Get the point guard back on the floor. Tuesday. Chris Pay separate processing and handling. Call now. So far, Purdue has certainly owned the day here at Xavier. 55 41 lead. And tomorrow, ESPNU has a college basketball doubleheader at 3 30. Bragging rights in South Carolina. South Carolina taking on Clemson. Then at 5 30 Eastern, this is a good one. Kansas State and Virginia Tech. ESPNU is the home of college hoops. Tomorrow, action tipping off at 3 30 Eastern time. Well, turnovers have been a major part of the story. Xavier Jimmy Dykes has turned it over 20 times at 18 in the first half. That's just crazy to have guard play that good and that strong, but also tells you about the strength of Purdue defensively. Talking to Robbie Hummel, was about during fall camp on the phone one day, I said, tell me something about Matt Painter. And he said, I'll tell you what, he makes you play defense and he makes you play hard. And that's what we've seen today. And Robbie Humble has absorbed everything Matt Painter has taught him now for five years, and that make you do something and make you do that, that's hard to handle. Well, Jackson got his rest. Dave O'Brien, Jimmy Dykes alongside from Cintas Center. And Lewis Jackson back on the floor, and that usually means good things for the Boilermaker offense. Trying to swing it inside, but he gave it up. Davis with the theft. He goes down. Jackson commits the midcourt foul. Although he pleads his case that he barely touched him. 8.24 to go. It's already deep into shooting one and ones here in the second half for Xavier. So Purdue's committed a lot of fouls. But a misfire. They're not really hitting them.
Purdue's going to continue to shorten the length of this game now with their motion offense. They will not take quick shots unless it's that. Oh, Barlow right down the lane. It just parted like the Red Sea. That is good spacing, good motion, and bad defense all wrapped up into one big slam. 57 to 41. Produce had a stranglehold on this one. Quick dish underneath for Walker, but Xavier knows the time is starting to run. They cannot trade baskets. You were questioning when would the run come? Who would propel that for Xavier with about five minutes gone in the first half? Yeah, you can't get a run though against Purdue. At least it's very difficult because of their discipline and their strength down here on this end of the floor. They're not going to turn it over very often and they're going to grind you. And that's a couple of mistakes back to back by Jackson, but you called it, partner. Party to the Red Sea. And you, you have to clamp down right now. You're trying to battle back. What was that? An impressive performance for the Boilermakers so far, leading by 14, 724 left. Help us beat cancer. The Beat Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. You can log on right now to www.jimmyv.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. You can do that right now. Lewis Jackson is the key to Purdue's offense. If you can stay in front of him, you can swallow up his size, but it's not easy to do. He is a turn-the-corner point guard, and he can turn the corner going to his right and to his left with the same speed and velocity. And his speed and quickness in this game, Xavier's an athletic bunch, but they have not been able to control this guy. It all starts with him. When you start talking Purdue, it starts with Lewis Jackson and then funnels quickly into the shot-making ability of Robbie Hummel. But it starts with this young man. 12 points for the man they call Lou Jack. The ultra-quick point guard for the Boilermakers. 7.24 to go here at Cintas Center. Usually far louder and more boisterous than we've heard it. They've got their Cincinnati rivalry game coming up. You know, the roof is going to have trouble staying on for that game, but Purdue's really taking the crowd out of it today. Look at that, 21 turnovers. Oh, Cincinnati's half-court offense so far. You talk about a work in progress. It is. Holloway feeding Martin on the wing. The jumper got it. Three-pointer. They need a bunch of them, but... Yeah. They've got time. 10-2 run very quietly for Xavier. The Purdue's had some turnovers now. they got to get back to owning their spot, running their stuff. Martin's third foul. Trying to step in front of Barlow. Sixth team foul for Xavier. So not the bonus yet. 6.39 on the clock. Jackson. We'll kill a little bit more clock here. Carroll feeding Hummel to catch the shot. Got it. Yeah, and then it all started with Robbie Hummel setting two or three screens himself, and then the pin down action. He curls into his shot about as well as anyone you'll see. Lions long one for three. So a big answer, timeout by Chris Mack of the Xavier Musketeers. Now they're within 10. With that timeout, you have to anticipate what does he have up his sleeve and what's he going to put on that board? Is it going to be some type of full court pressure? Because he knows with 6.14 to go that uh, they cannot just continue to allow Purdue to run their stuff and grind them down here. Obi, it's hard to kill the will now of Lions and two Holloway. It's hard to kill the will of this Xavier team. And Chris Mack right now knows he's got a chance for another BCS win, which would equate to a resonating, you know, are we going to be a legitimate three or four seed? That's what they're trying to battle through right now with 6.14 to go. Every time someone like Lyons or Holloway or Freeze hits a shot, 
to give this crowd hope and put Xavier back in a comeback road. Hummel or someone else hits a bigger shot for Purdue to quiet them and kind of steal the life from them. That's what Chris Mack wanted the timeout for. He's going to put a press on. See if he can speed this game up a little bit and get it scrambled. Not easy to scramble, Purdue. Xavier's only turned it over twice in the second half, so they have tightened that up. Jackson, around freeze. So they look for Hummel again. He curls inside, shot clock at 15. Hummel, here's another one on the way, and that's in and out. Lions with it. Xavier within 10 points and the ball. Martin. Throw that one away right into the hands of Johnson. Mm. Now you're back to Garden for probably, you know, 30, 31 seconds. Johnson will shoot it, but it's going to be an offensive foul before the basket. They're going to get Jackson. Jackson getting up, shaking his head. Can't believe it, but that's three fouls on him. 5.23 left. As good as this young man has been, Jackson, just in the last four minutes, he's had a couple of turnovers, a reach-in foul. This thing is far from over. I'm telling you, I saw Xavier come back in the Rock and Memorial Gym Monday night at Vanderbilt win the thing in overtime. They've been as many as 19 down in this game. Holloway being held up. Carroll with the foul. His third. So the foul's really starting to mount on both sides. So five minutes, ten seconds to go with Sintas. Two shots for Xavier. And Holloway, a superb foul shooter. He once made 17 for 17 against Richmond last year. So the backcourt duo in the second half bringing it a little bit better combined eight points in the first half That bonus sign under the score for Xavier right now is huge in this game Every time they get fouled they're gonna go to that free throw line stop the clock and shoot two Here we go 59 51 The closest since the game was 9 to 2, Purdue. And Robbie Hummel is down and gripping that leg and slamming that hand on the deck. Looks like it is his left, but it's hard to tell. He has the brace on the right. It looks like a cramp. Of the left leg. Yeah. Yep. It's exactly what it is. And that, you know what? That is great news for Purdue. Oh, that is great news for Purdue. Uh, he's going to hobble off down toward the end of the bench, but we'll see if he returns with 444 left. They'll bring Jacob Lawson, a freshman, into the ball game. 32 minutes of play for Hummel today. Will there be any more for him? Dave, short term, it's bad news for Purdue, as in finishing this ball game. Long term, it's great news for Purdue. Now Purdue, they look a lot different without Mr. Hummel on the floor. Well, without their senior leader and 19 points a game scorer. Here's Smith to let fly. Rebounded by Martin. Xavier can feel it right now. For the first time, they can feel it. And for the first time, I think Purdue can feel it as well. Holloway, penetration. Taken away by Jackson. They deny him in the lane. Jackson to push the tempo. And a foul. Lawson hit. 417 left. Two Hall on Walker. Two Holloway has not played well, Dave. He has not played well. He's a much better player than what we've seen today. He's been too aggressive. 
That time he took the ball on the first side of the floor right into the teeth of really good defense. You can take the ball into the teeth of average defense, not terrific defense. Lawson, the freshman. Almost still stretching out that leg. Collective giant sigh of relief from Boilermaker Nation that it was not the right knee that he was pulling at. Which has already been repaired twice. Two separate torn ACLs. Lawson makes one of two to bump the lead back to nine. Carroll back on. Lawson off for Painter. What about Kenny Freeze around that rim? I think it's worth at least probing and exploring, getting him a high percentage touch. Holloway nearly gave it up. Almost turned it over. Freezes up high. Needs to be freezed down low. The shot. Holloway misfires. Up and in on a follow by Walker. Another area where they miss Robbie Hummel. Doesn't have great rebounding numbers, but he understands the importance of rebounding in crunch time. Hummel standing, flexing down on the other end. Can't come in yet, though. Seven-point game. Bird off the fake. Fall away shot. No, barely grazed the iron. Rebound, tip fought for freeze and a foul on the play against Purdue. Now you're getting a sense of what Sintas can be like because this has become a ball game and it looks like Hummel senses that he's getting back into the fray. Saturday and Sunday only at Joseph A. BYU's Brandon Davies, one of three Cougars, averaging at least 12 points per game this season. BYU and Oregon, less than five minutes from tip-off this game in Salt Lake City, coming up right after Purdue. Anish, thank you very much. This has turned into a competitive game, seemingly against all odds, Jimmy Dykes, the way things were going. Free throw issues last season, well, they had them on the Xavier side, and they're going to have a guy who has not shot them well and freeze at the line here in a moment. And that's to be kind for the season. He is 3 for 16. 21%. And right now, X needs every point they can get on that board. And Xavier has their sights set on an A-10 championship. They are the gold standard in their league over the last five years. Look at their schedule this year at Vandy, Purdue, at Butler, Cincinnati, Gonzaga, at Memphis. They, oh, they made a big one they there. They sure did. Chris Mack knows that that's bonus. Can the big fella make it two for two and make it a five-point game? He does. <laughs> Celebrate good times. Come on. Wasn't that many minutes ago, Purdue is blowing Xavier out. Now a five-point game. This would be a comeback for the ages for the Xavier Musketeers if they can pull off this thing. I told you ten minutes ago, it's hard to kill their will. Carroll straight on. No. Another rebound for Xavier. Will Holloway take over? Freeze, Taylor. No need to be in a rush. I mean, 2.45 to go, you're fine. Holloway, the All-American candidate. To Holloway, a senior. Shot clock at 12 now for Xavier. Lions to the baseline, the bounce. Taylor, and draws the foul. That was on Hummel. And Hummel again slow to rise. 2.28 to go. Purdue has iced the on-ball action of Xavier several times in this game on that outside third. Something that uh, Vanderbilt bothered Xavier some with on Monday night. This time Xavier goes hard 
on that baseline drive when they get iced and fill a guy in from behind. Taylor, another man who scuffles at the line, 53%. Just tuning in, Xavier had 18 turnovers, right, in the first half. Yep. 18 turnovers in the first half. And with a made free throw, they're only going to be down four, and they can't do it. Turned over four times in the second half. Walker went for the ball, but it's off his hands and on a play. Back over to the Boilermakers, 2.25 to go. Coming up next on ESPNU, Oregon and BYU. But we are not done yet. Although this game six or seven minutes ago looked like it was done. Quite a comeback by the Xavier Musketeers. Let's go back to Monday now when they were on the road at Vandy. We pick it up in the second half. They were down 10 points in that game. Well, it became Mark Lyons and Drew Holloway at that point. They started controlling the basketball game off the bounce and off the shot. And defensively, they really turned up the heat and the juice on Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt coughed it up. That's the question mark I have in this game. Can they get Purdue to cough it up like Vanderbilt did? They went on and stunned them now in overtime to a 12-point win. Might I add to the fact I did the game Monday night overtime at Vanderbilt. Did the game last night in Louisville overtime. I'm just saying, I don't care going three for three this week <laughs> in overtime. Jimmy, extra session dykes. 60 to 55, Purdue has the ball. You and I, I believe, have done, this is our eighth game together this year, I think. We've had three, three of them, yeah. three overtimes. We've gone OT. We're just saying. Stay tuned. Slapped on the inbounds pass. Purdue's going to keep it. Walker slapped it down on the line. you got a big guy in Walker guarding a smaller guy on the out of bounds right now. This, this is not a, a given to get this thing in. He's frozen. Right in front of Xavier's bench, the assistant coach will be, will be counting quicker. They'll be going one, two, three, four, trying to get him sped up. Didn't get, work. Get it inbounds to Jackson. 2.20 to go. Well, right now, after Purdue, you'd love to be able to throw it to the inside and score around the rim. They don't have that guy, though. Amo remaining in the game. Despite what appeared to be a cramp. Shot clock at 14 now for the Boilers. Johnson drives it, fires it up, and rolls away. Big rebound by Walker. Holloway steps back for three. How about this? 60 to 58. Look at that run in the last six minutes. Kill the will of this team, and you've done something. But so far, no one's been able to do it. Two Holloway has great control and confidence. He has struggled the entire game, much like he did at Vanderbilt on Monday. He and his partner, Lions. But in crucial times, you want a crucial point guard that wants the ball and wants to make a play. That, to me, is the description of two Holloway. And what has happened, Matt Painter wants to know, to his 19-point lead. 1.48 to go. Purdue now suddenly clings to a two-point advantage. They've had some turnovers, and Lewis Jackson has not been able to turn the corner. He's a turn-the-corner point guard, and they've been able to wall him off a little bit to keep him from making plays. Can he turn the corner one or two more times in this game to save the victory for Purdue? Lions has had trouble staying with him. All hands it back for Jackson. 135 left. You know they want Hummel to get a touch. He's the dependable guy with size that can get a shot. Gets it back beyond the three. Now he'll shoot it. Rebound comes free. Jackson out fought everybody for a loose ball and a foul. Or a 121 to go here. Jackson may have got hit. I believe they called a timeout there. So 121 left. 
with Jackson really out hustled everyone for this one. Your description is spot on, partner. You said he out fought everyone for the rebound. The smallest guy on the floor with the biggest tick tock, tick tock comes up with a board. That's a good look by Hummel, one that they love and they trust. Look at Lewis Jackson, 5'9", understanding the game is on the line. That game is the most viable thing in my life right now, and he went and got it. Purdue with two timeouts remaining. Xavier down to one. Xavier will have the possession arrow on the next held ball. And Purdue with a two-point advantage. Xavier is undefeated at 5-0. and oh. They've already gone over time once this week. Oregon and BYU will be coming your way next on ESPNU. How about the weekend you and I have had? Started last night in the KFC Yum Center. Overtime game between Vanderbilt and Louisville. We drive over here, get about five hours sleep, go to shoot arounds and staring at another one right down the barrel. I think the officials have gone to the monitor to just, to, just to make sure there are no elbows thrown. Some basketball plays going on right now. That's all basketball stuff. That's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing there. No flagrant fouls. But Purdue's got that ball over there. The closest spot to where the jump ball occurred, I believe, is going to be on the baseline. So, you know, Matt Painter and staff, it's one of the first things you'd ask, where's the ball going to be? And from there, you go up on that board and say, here's what I want. Now, Purdue typically, OB, is not a, a scoring out of bounds play, quick trigger, trigger team. But they may try to dial one up right now and get an open free look because their half court offense has not been good the last three or four minutes. Well, Matt Painter tried to score quickly here, although he has the full 34 to work with. I think he will. Jerome Johnson being called on inbound. And it could be a delayed out of bounds play. Not scoring off the initial pass. Carroll gives up the dribble, and he traveled with it. Back over to Xavier. It goes with a minute 16 and a chance to tie or take the lead. If the out-of-bounds play was designed for Carroll to get it up top and be a distributor, that's not the play you want to draw up. He's not strong enough to hold up to that kind of pressure. You talk about a drought. Over five minutes since Purdue's last field goal. This game has never been tied. I'll tell you right now, Two Holloway wants the ball. He's that kind of a guy. He can struggle for 38 minutes, but he wants the ball. He'll shoot it for the lead. It's 61 to 60. You've got to be kidding me. A 20 to 3 run in the last 6.45 for Xavier. And they have the lead with a minute three to play. Absolutely remarkable. There's such thing in college basketball as good old fashioned want to. And two Holloway wants to as bad as anyone or as much as anyone I've seen in college ball this year. The step back and transition began. The daggers that he started throwing up. He wants the ball to make plays. His will you cannot define. He wants the ball. Lions to Holloway. A little bit of an on ball, just a brush screen and sticks it. I see you, 52. I see you. Xavier with their first lead since it was two to nothing. And they were getting buried in the second half, down as many as 19. What a comeback. But it's not in the books yet. A minute three left. The ball is out of bounds under. I don't know what they thought it was on the side for. Goodness gracious, what a comeback. 
Do the Boilermakers answer now? Dave, I think it's 23 again, trying to get in position to turn the corner. Bad foul. A push from behind by Travis Taylor on Robbie Hummel. And shoving the best foul yes. shooter on the court. Something you can't do right here. Hummel posts up from just a, a trip of the feet. It's an accident, but gets tangled up, and Hummel gets the call. But you're right about a guy that can certainly stroke it on you in critical times. 84% career. He has not attempted a foul shot in this game. 55.8 left. The way the building is built, that's not a real difficult background to be shooting into because there's a real big gap right behind the backboard. All he sees when he's looking is blue. That section back there is not bothering him. It wouldn't anyways, but he's dialed in. It rolls off. Tipped out. And Xavier will have the ball here. Tied at 61. 54 seconds to go. Now you want the first good look you can get right now for Xavier. And you certainly are going to trust Holloway and his will to win a basketball game. And he's got to stay in the moment. He'll fire another long one. Bad! Absolutely amazing! Money to Holloway! Two huge shots! 64-61. Cramping up once again, Hummel, no shot here as he goes down crumbling in the corner for the second time. Cramping up, 29 seconds to go. You just feel for the young man. There's nothing he can do about it once it starts. And I go back to the shot at two Holloway. And I said you trust his instincts. Look at Hummel right here, he just can't go. He just, oh. That is a pain that just works on you as an athlete, knowing that you are helpless to what's going on in your body right now. You trust the instincts of Holloway if you're Chris Mack, and he did. Put the ball in 52 hands and said, your potential All-America, your potential A-10 Player of the Year. Go get us a basket. He has not had a great game. Has not. But he now has 19 points. And Robbie Hummel, once again, struggling with the cramping, has to come out of the game at a crucial juncture. But in a crucial spot, Holloway has delivered twice for Xavier. And his expression has not changed the entire ball game. When he was down, he looked just like he does now. When he started rattling off daggers, 52 looks just like he does now. To do it, the ball from the side. 29 seconds to go, trailing by three. Ryan Smith is a guy you want to get free. He's taking it out, and they'll go right back to him. Oh, nearly mishandled. Smith has it knocked around, and now a foul. With 23 seconds to go against Xavier. What a scramble here at the end. Totally unexpected. We you know what, you, you, you got to put extreme heat on Ryan Smith because he is a three-point marksman. Do you like the foul? No. But you know what, you can't let this guy get vision of the rim, so they heat him up. Robbie Hummel over near his bench at the very end down on the floor. He's in absolute agony. He's put a towel over his face. He's been through so much in his career with two torn ACLs, averaging 19 points coming back for his senior year. And it's not the knee, that's the good news. But a terrible blow to the Boilermakers' chances. Their best shooter, their best scorer, Justin Martin has just fouled out. You have the opposite ends with the spectrum right now in college athletics. 
with Robbie Hummel down as good of a competitor, as fierce as a competitor that this game has. The expression on his face tells it all. The building's rocking, and there's nothing that they can do for Robbie Hummel. On the other side, Drew Holloway has lit this building up. First make by Ryan Smith. 64-62. 67% foul shooter. Senior from Toledo. And that'll roll in. So timeout Xavier with 23 seconds left. That right there to me is a memorable moment so far in college basketball. A guy that has battled back through two knee surgeries just to play another year. And now the cramps have set in. This is a tough dude now. I'm telling you, as tough a guy as we have, and he is in some severe pain at the end of the bench in the Centos Center. He has given his all. And on the other end, two Holloway has willed his team back with shot after shot after play. The expressions are different. Neither guy is more competitive than the other. But one of them right now is in position to will his team to a powerful win, and the other guy is helpless. The emotions that go with college basketball tug on my heart every year. And this is one time right now that I will take away, no matter what I see, the rest of the season. Those pictures to me are priceless. See Holloway in the second half. Very similar to what he did on Monday against Vanderbilt, leading them back from a late deficit, 10 points down, forcing overtime, winning that game against a top 25 opponent. And now coming back from as many as 19 points down in the second half to lead at home with 23 seconds to go. Partner, you heard me talk about it last night. In order to win championships and go deep in March, you have to have a crucial time point guard. 52 in white is that by definition. Hummel on his back out of the game. Still writhing in agony over there. Walker to put it in. Pressing Purdue. In for Holloway and a foul. 21.7 left. Holloway is a tremendous foul shooter. Xavier's been in that double bonus for a long time, and some things that had to go their way did. They scored with a stop clock. Now Holloway has a chance to push this thing out to three, but look ahead to what Purdue has on the floor. They don't have their best three-point shooter, but he's set to check in. Yeah, they're about to get Ryan Smith in. Yeah. All the way at 85%, rattles in the first one. This will be the guy, Ryan Smith checking in. Obi, that's what uh, Xavier's done in this building. Winning 42 of their last 43. The loss was to Florida last year. Mm. Today, another sellout, their 103rd all-time sellout at Centos. Purdue quieted them for the longest stretch, but not here down the stretch. 66-63. This is a quick two by Jackson or fine Ryan Smith time. Johnson to drive it in the lane. A little bump there. Can't get it to go. Tipped out. Bird got it back. Pops the pass to Jackson. Johnson in the corner. Seven to get off a shot. Jackson can't hit it. Rebounded away. Now it's free. Johnson getting to the three-point line. Lost it. Over. What a win for Xavier, 66-63, from 19 down, and to Holloway, player of the year in the A-10 last season, leads the back with magnificent clutch shots in the second half, and Xavier beats Purdue in a game that looked like it was dead and gone. It was dead and gone. But someone forgot to tell Two Holloway that it was dead and gone. Boy, the mad scramble. They never got Ryan Smith a touch. Everyone else touched the ball for Purdue, with the exception of Ryan Smith. If you get him a touch, that's your marksman. That's a pretty clean look. 
just not there. You cannot kill the will of two Holloway is the bottom line with his savior team. Well, wow. certainly a crushing loss for the Purdue Boilermakers, but Xavier remains perfect on the season. They are now 6-0. Two great wins for them this week. Vandy and Purdue, 66-63. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPNU, the worldwide leader in sports. Great images from the day, and what an incredible finish. Here from Centos Center, 66-63. Somehow Xavier wins it as we send it to Miles Simon and Roxy Bernstein in Salt Lake City.